Hello everyone. Today uh, I thought I'd do a production video. It's been a while since I've done those and I had an idea for a track which doesn't happen very often. Um, let me explain. I make music all the time but usually I start from scratch just um, with a beat and uh, search for some samples randomly or some sounds and just go with whatever comes up. But Today I had this idea in my head for a, for a track and uh, yeah, let's take the coming hour or so and I'll try to make this um, idea in my head a reality. Uh, so what it's going to be is uh, it's going to be a techno banger, of course. Um, I had an idea for a rhythm with the dub chord and because I was a little bit worried that I would forget this idea, I went ahead and made a little MIDI clip with the basic rhythm here. Um, let me just play it. So I, I made a clip, uh, put an operator on the track, which is a standard sine wave, not getting into any sound design just yet. Uh, I'll put the metronome on. Very simple idea for a rhythm, for a, a riff for the, for the dub chord. Um, Obviously, this is nowhere near what I want it to be. So uh, let's get started. But we'll we'll just get started with um, well, creating some audio tracks here. But I need MIDI tracks. Let's just get started with a kick um, and a bass, a sub bass. So one thing I've been using lately uh, is actually the the Max for Life drum instruments. I think they are pretty pretty interesting especially the kick is a nice um, dedicated kick instrument um, I have a few of those I have kick 2 um, I have punch box this is a nice and simple one so uh, yeah let's use this and uh, let's get the microphone out of the way a little bit out of my field of vision right okay so MIDI clip to the floor beat already this sounds pretty decent this kick i've um let me mute this i've selected a uh, quick tempo 138 um yeah what i'm gonna do pitch it down rid of this noise and click one issue that I have with this instrument is that it doesn't appear to restart the wave um, thinking this is a sine wave with some distortion and every kick sounds subtly different which is cool but uh, for that sort of live feel that is not what I'm really going for here so I'll just record um, resample I'll just resample one kick. That's the wrong clip. I wanted to have just a one hit here. That's why I created this one. Okay, so let's use that one. Okay, good sounding kick. Now we can get rid of this. I'll just. Drag this here to create a uh, simpler instrument. And this is our resampled kick. Like so. Uh, okay, let's create another MIDI track um, for a sub bass. And I'm, I'm going to go for a very intense uh, sub bass here uh, with the 16th note pattern and I'm gonna create a kick or a low tom like sound with a lot of punch and I'm gonna make it almost as loud as the kick drum uh, for the maximum sort of uh, low end punch so this note the kick is as you can hear it's sort of tuned dun, dun. sounds like a G no, A sharp, um, A, what's it called? 
sharp, yeah. Not flat, but sharp. Okay, so every time I create a new track, by the way, it in automatically inserts um, an EQ and utility. That's just something you can uh, set as a standard in life, which I think is very useful. So what am I doing here? Let's just go for a very simple pattern here. Um, yeah, and I said I was going to use a little bit of pitch envelope, let's see, um, or maybe I didn't say, but I said it was going to be like a kick-like sound a little bit, so, actually, you can make a kick drum with this if I just, create a clip here just to show you. already pretty much sounding like a kick so it depends the, the sort of snap you get depends on the, the decay length and the curve of the of the of the pitch envelope here and how much pin, pitch envelope you uh, use yeah so the peak here so the 48 semitone step basically false and then you can set all this here um, okay so this is operator of course every um, oscillator which is actually called an operator has its own uh, amp envelope basically let's make the decay shorter and let's see if we can soften up the attack a little bit shorten this decay okay well let's get back to the clip that we actually want which is the 16th note one okay so now you can hear there's too much pitch envelope sound going on we either need to shorten it or perhaps we need to lessen the amount let's play around with that Maybe something like this and then these notes they um, they blend together uh, we need to make them shorter and then the decay sorry the release uh, on the on the operator envelope will sort of glue them together a little bit but you need to have these here these individual hits something like this maybe Let's see how that goes with the kick Sounding already quite loud, this combination. Just gonna low pass filter this. low end right there I'm not gonna do any side chaining or other stuff um, let's let's start working on the on the main uh, act here which is the the dub chord idea I had I still have this clip loaded on here let's go with uh, with diva and let's stay hydrated um, so nice thing about diva is, is that it um, it's sort of modular in the sense that you can swap out um, the VCO and the uh, the filter and everything. I was thinking going with the um, the um, UB filter, which basically is um, what's it called Oberheim. I don't like these Moog. Um, envelopes I, I prefer the, the traditional analog ones I guess they're modeled on the Roland and then this is the VCO section of the Jupiter 8 I think um, 
Okay. Um, let's solo this again. Turn off the effects for now. Okay. Very soft sounding attack. Uh, I think that's the filter doing something here. Uh, let's see. Let's open it up. Yeah, there's there's some some stuff going on here. Lag. Okay, just gonna set this to default, I guess. Yeah. Filter completely open. Okay. Um, so the notes I made here are C, and the sub bass is A sharp. So let's. sharp well let's go an octave down shift down um, okay well dub chords are pretty easy they're just at least in the standard form they're minor chords so I have the root note here the A sharp um, minor third and a fifth okay uh, let's get the uh, high pass filter in here. Thin that out a little bit. I'll keep this for now. Um, so I'm thinking about uh, doing some trickery with uh, with the Oberheim uh, filter here. Um, another idea I had was maybe to vary the notes in the chord a little bit. So. Let's lower all this in volume. It's already uh, close to zero dB on the master. That was already sounding uh, dubby, isn't it? Uh, maybe I thought that's... Add some high notes here. a little bit of a variation here okay um, this is of course very vanilla and um, we have the filter here You can see the modulation here is already connected to LFO2. We're going to use that, but we also want to use envelope 2 um, to control the filter cutoff. Let's see. forgot about actually is the VCO um, it's basically if I just open this up completely is one sawtooth we can have another one and mix them in mix them together 
already get a little bit of this phasing sound and we can detune this a little bit further. Let's see if this actually sounds better. just the, the one uh, but we can have some noise perhaps uh, let's see I will need to set this to noise and that one oh by the way I did something wrong here I had both the soul and the, um, the um, uh, pulse wave selected so let's see yeah sounds better so I'll have both of these and I'll also add in some noise Pretty loud here, there's noise. Um, so we'll have to do a trade off. So I have just the one saw tooth coming from VCO2, and I'll have the noise from one. Because if I have the saw selected here as well, well, I can still do that, but I need to play with the mix so the noise isn't too loud. It's cool with the noise, it definitely does add something to noise, but yeah. This is too much. Uh, this oscillator pair can do a lot more. You have the cross mod, which uh, is completely crazy. It's probably not going to work in this setting. This actually could be something to modulate as well. If you want to go like in a breakdown or something and sort of mess up the sound, make it very freaky. For now, we're just going to keep it like this. more with effects but uh, yeah maybe some chorus yeah not really convinced of that of course we have all kinds of effects in life um, let's see let's start with some some automation here um, so we can play with the cutoff, the envelope amount, the resonance, the morph between the filters, uh, the attack and the decay times of the um, filter envelope. Uh, so as you can see, I've selected all of them to be modulated here. And one thing I thought would be, would be uh, cool is just to go to um, the effects and in Live 11 under the audio effects you have now the modulators. Um, it used to be that these were uh, effects, uh, basically you could only put them in front of a, uh, a virtual instrument. Let's just have a few here. Um, now you can just put them after the, well, it doesn't matter where in the signal because they're, they're, they're not actually doing anything to the signal. They're just controllers for, for, these, um, for these values. So pretty self-explanatory how they work. They have a depth, uh, a rate. So let's, let's just set a few sort of low rates here and have some stuff modulate slowly over time, just automatically. Of course, you can also do things with automating by hand. Um, in this case, I just want to uh, have some variations going and see uh, what sounds good here. I've set the depth to zero, um, which is handy if you want to sort of make sure you have the right center value where the, uh, the LFO is gonna modulate around and then on the first one, I just click map here and let's set that to the depth. Um, and as you can see, it jumps to the middle, whereas I didn't have it there, so I can offset it. Pretty high amount. Let's um, triangle wave here, and now I can play with depth. And you can see this starts moving. That's one. Uh, 
this one, Resonance. That's just modulating, doing its thing. Um, it's actually, just quickly just throw on a high pass here. We don't really need anything under 150, under 100 hertz. Uh, okay, well, um, so we have that going. Uh, don't worry, I'll get to the delay because of course we cannot have dub chords without a very lush delay. Um, I'm going to try something new on there too. First, I want some more modulation sound. Let's say, let's go with, um, let's try phase mistress here. Some phasing. Um, where do I have them? Sound toys. The famous bundle, the plugin bundle. This is obviously too much. Slow sweeps, let's see. maybe something with some resonance or something 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 let's see um or uh, yeah uh, audio effects pitch and modulation maybe the frequency shifter maybe a little bit of uh, subtle ring mod that's not very subtle but you get the idea Mix it in maybe for this sort of metallic. So it's completely set to wet now, which completely messes up the sound. It's not what I'm going for. I'll, I'll dial back the mix later. Let's just see if, if I can find a, find a frequency that I like. A sort of character, a timbre, if you will. pressure effect. You can make a stereo as well. A tiny bit. That. Okay. Now let's see some delay. I have this interesting new plugin. Um, let's create an extra send return track. Uh, plugins. this one spaced out black friday sale <laughs> bought it um 
Yeah, let's set it to completely wet. So this is a, um, a delay and a reverb with uh, some neat tricks. I'm just gonna turn off the reverb for now. Let's see what this does. <laughs> explain how everything works here um, in detail there are some videos on this um, showing how it works it's kind of an unconventional um, delay and reverb plugin you can see it actually uses uh, sort of a sequencer uh, to decide what the delay taps are and then there's these controls for tweaking it here Let's see. Monkey tape. Uh, it sounds very nice. The tape. Lo-fi. AZ. This is lo-fi. Also sounds very good, but... Reverse function, which is also cool. Uh, let's add in some reverb here. Get this sort of XY control here where you decide how much of uh, dry and wet and each effect you want. Um, yeah, let's just focus on just the reverb. So we'll get reverb and delay in one here. Pretty epic sounding. Very nice. Yeah, that sounds with the with original track. filter in one let's see stardust doesn't appear to be doing a lot here pre-delay So, what else? Um, it's already filling out the spectrum of the, the sonic spectrum quite a bit here. EQ this kick a little bit and then move on to some percussion. So 
little bit too much of this. A little mid thump. Does have very nice thump around here. One more thing, um, since we're working towards a finished track, I'll, uh, and I'm not in full like creative mode here, just hammering out ideas, but I'm also mixing as I'm going along. So let's do some, uh, some side chaining here, pseudo side chaining with uh, LFO tool. <laughs> that away out of the kick, out of the kick's way a little bit. Oh yeah, and one thing I was thinking of doing is let's the, make these top notes a little bit more subtle. Um, these. Lower the velocity of those. Did I do that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have to configure Diva to actually respond to that uh, velocity here. So now it's not responding. It's playing all notes really loud. Um, if I do this, you can hear the top notes coming less loud. Let's do somewhere in between. But they're more subtle than without. Actually what I'm gonna do as well since we're mixing. Is, um, oh, put the uh, LFO tool after the spaced out effect as well. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, moving on. Some percussion, some uh, hi hats and stuff. Uh, let's go to the uh, drum synths. Um, let's see this one for a shaker. Haven't used that in a while. Let's see. Ooh. Not sure I'm gonna like this. Let's see what we can get out of this. Um, there's an envelope here. Soft attack. A pitch. And there's a filter here. Okay. like this I guess hmm that's interesting so this is a high pass filter weird weird this cliff there's literally nothing below this um, frequency yeah so dependent on the pitch then yeah I guess so it's a uh, already highly filtered noise. Um, okay, something like this. I think this does create unique. Yeah, every every hit sounds unique because of the probably the way the noise works. You can see the volume isn't consistent all the time, so that's nice. That's a nice organic little shaker here. Let's make it stereo. Let's have two. Uh, very, very simple trick this. I'm just gonna copy this by option dragging. Pan one, let's say to the left halfway and one to the right. Lower the volume a little bit. Yeah. Now if these two uh, different uh, instruments 
sounded used a static sample they would sound identical and they wouldn't be uh, there wouldn't be a stereo effect and right now you can hear clearly differences between left and right difference in the volume so that's great what else uh well a hi-hat uh, we have one of those as well very concisely labeled hh um see what we can get out of that one Need some tweaking as well yeah this is your typical analog style hi-hat with probably some sort of ring modulation and noise mixed together this doesn't have an attack parameter unfortunately it seems uh, tone resonance types of noise let's go with white random random panning okay could be useful and punch yeah um, what I'll do let me show you this trick I want a softer attack um, and for this we can use the LFO tool to shape a little bit more um, let's set the tempo to one eighth Now it coincides with the start of each hit, of each note. You can see we can tweak it this way. Also the decay. Let's just keep this like this. It's not really doing anything. That's fine. Let's throw in my favorite reverb here on the, on the first return channel. For all a room, I hardly use anything else. Um, I'm actually not having great success with the the new hybrid reverb in life. Um, looks like a very promising uh, effect, but yeah, I haven't gotten the sounds of it that I like really. Um, yeah, for all a room just seems to do, do the trick. Okay, uh, what else? Okay, so um, at this point, let's just try some random sounds. So one thing I like to do is um, get random names for tracks, and then uh, with a, with an online random word generator, and and then I'll, what I'll sometimes do is I'll, I'll type in the the first letters of the <laughs> random words that I use as a name. Um, let me just go on my phone and just quickly get a random name. Not ransom, random, uh, random word generator. This website here, uh, I'll have it generate two words. Generate random words. High share it doesn't mean anything really, but I'll just name this high share. Good to save your work. Don't lose it. Okay, so now let's just type it in here and see what sounds come up. High, probably a lot because high is a descriptive, of course. High. Uh, even if I start with the yeah, high tune short. Those are toms. And kicks, bass drums. 
yeah, let's just see if uh, we can do something with that. Maybe. Uh, almost in tune with uh, with the chord but not quite so let's tune it plug-in on <clears throat> on this this has been around for a while I like it a lot ping pong built-in reverb is useful maybe not for now but sharp okay let's put that here what else so uh, the name oh yeah high share some more random samples if I type in share here when you're feeling really uninspired, this is great. <laughs> Just see what the universe gives you, sample-wise. Hmm. Nice hat. Maybe layer that up with the other one. Little arrangement trick. Have one playing at first and then the other maybe added to it. Come on. Yeah. Soft attack. I like it. What I'm thinking actually is resampling this. This sounds like a good background noise or something. I will use the reverb. I'll copy it off from the Return channel here. Single shot. Full wet. Let's go for a crazy long tail. Yeah, I'm going to resample this. Okay. Now we 
don't need this anymore. I'll just dial that back. Don't need this. Um, let's create an, another MIDI track here. Maybe something like this. Let's see. Do some backgrounds. Let's get rid of the retricking and make a long release so this sort of overlaps. shaping what we can do is uh, switch to a sampler let's see how it works when it reverse that's now uh, of course when it reverses that's this rising quality um, let's just copy the LFO tool from one of the other tracks there you go pumping pump it if I get rid of these. Interesting timbres. Sort of tune together. some stuff here before I get confused more confused uh, 
sub dub tom this is shaker yeah shaker head one head two yeah uh yeah Maybe they're also shakers with the soft attack, who cares? Uh, okay. Uh, noisy loop. Tend to put those in the beginning here. Don't know what the slash is doing here with the tom. Okay. What else? Maybe some sounds for in the breaks, maybe something like a riser thingy or something. Well, let's see. Share. Share. Like it's bad, I don't like it. Crystal shards. Maybe we can do something with that, sort of an FM sounding sounding sound <laughs> see how it's tuned that's tuned correctly at least, at least that's something uh, I don't know blue note Was it long enough? Everything can sound good if you drown it in enough reverb. So let's do that. Want to introduce some dissonance here. to dial that back a little bit for pads something like 20 is often a good starting point 20% up as I'm going along obviously just adding some weird harmonics thinking of using this in a in a in a break or something uh, let's start arranging so drag all this across to the arrangement view see if I got this they're all the same length bars so that's easy um, yeah I have no idea how long I've been working on this say about five minutes now of course we don't want to have everything playing all the time um, Let's 
let's start with just this. One thing I could do is make a variation here. Like a simplified version. So if I split this clip here, now we have two. Just to make it easier, I can give this a different color. Um, maybe we won't have these high notes here. And maybe just the first part of the riff here. This is too loud now. One thing I want to do is let's get rid of the um, the LFO on the depth here. So that's this one, I think. Just so I control can control that myself. get rid of all these LFOs and just automate everything myself but uh, for now let's just go with the depth maybe get rid of this frequency shifter thing just insert a uh, an overdrive instead like the overdrive sound here this is also something that could be automated of course add some bite So here, when it changes from the basic riff to the more sort of extensive one, let's have a break there. So it's going to group the kick and the sub together. Kick and sub. And throw on a auto filter, high pass mode. It's nice, you can actually hear the... Uh, Sort of the high part of the sub note, the sort of the, the clickiness of the pitch envelope. Still hear that here? Okay. This is just a little bit of color coding convention that I have. I'll just let's see. Show automation. There we go. Ah, wrong, wrong one. Just like this. What did I do wrong here? Where's my bass? Where's my sub bass gone? Oh, turn it off. Okay, um, some bass 
basic arranging here. This tom, let's sort of fade that in. Shaker from the start, perhaps. So I'm going to change the alignment of this track a little bit because it's sounding late, and sounding sloppy because of the long attack on the shaker. This is more precise and compare it. So like, uh, too late, and now if I put it 10 milliseconds back to start earlier, basically. Ten, please. It's more on time. Yeah. And we can do something with this. Add a lower. I don't know. Something like this, maybe an octave lower. just to fill out the backgrounds. If you turn it off, then you notice that it is actually there. Make a stereo super shaker. <laughs> yeah. Let's do some basic gain staging here. It's a little bit late for something to happen. So let's make a tiny little break here. Maybe something like this. exactly 10 tracks I'm working with and my CPU is not really enjoying this. Um, there is a beta of Live 11 that's optimized for the Mac M1 processor. This isn't it. This is just a regular version. I'll be very interested to see how that goes when that comes out, that um, when it's out of beta and will be an official release. Um, yeah, but for now, we'll just have to cope with this. It's sort of struggling, especially with large samples. I have the idea, the feeling maybe it's because I don't have a terrible amount of RAM in this. I think uh, I went with, um, I think I went with 16, not sure. So this pad, I guess crystal pad, something that I'm using in this break here that I just made a little bit longer, uh, sort of like a riser thing. Come on. 
Pretend, let's pretend this is a DJ playing with a filter, doing this break here. <laughs> to add some movement to this pad something I do a lot with these put an auto pen before the reverb with that's important uh, to make it a movement a little bit more subtle than if it were after reverb something like this <laughs> this arrangement is I'm just gonna throw in some stuff here and there um, and no worry about it too much let's see <laughs> This is quite blocky. Uh, in the sense that the um, well, sort of uh, running out of words. Um, blocky arrangement in the sense that some stuff happens probably at predictable moments in time. Um, again, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh, just gonna make this fill it out uh, the arrangement and um, yeah it's gonna be a complete full-length track and then when I listen back to it at some point if I decide I want to work on it more I will start spicing things up making them more interesting um, yeah, let's go back to the basic riff here. So there's lots of stuff to be done here. Oh, I actually 
doing this wrong. Um, the timing here of the break. Uh, well, I could do that, but that would probably sound weird. Um, put this here. Yeah. If I decide to work on this some more. that maybe do the same here just some variations um, so I have a piece of music that you could play um, something to listen to and to see whether it's worth working on and then I could of course add other parts uh, start automating things by hand to make them more interesting I'll do a little bit of automation drawing here I think uh, yeah the physio depth um, don't have a USB cable at hand here to connect in my controller but I'll just do some I'll just draw some physio uh, sorry some filter depth automation here for the for the dub core thing <laughs> through this gives me a little idea let's have a something like a symbol going on here um, let's go for the good old uh, 909 909 right um, the standard one that always works no <laughs> this one let's make a quick pattern here uh, let's see if I still have the uh, LFO tool selected no command C command V 
Um, no retrick, long release. <laughs> Oh yeah, soften the attack, or I could even just make the start point a little bit later. I pass it a little. Crazy dub reverb delay thing. tracks because the uh, group track of the kick and the sub doesn't really count as a separate one I guess so yeah I'm thinking I'm gonna leave it at that um, this is our dub inspired techno banger sort of thing um, as you can see I'm just gonna start rendering this out um, no idea how long this actually took, but that's the idea. Pretty basic track, but the nice thing about the dub chord is that it fills out so much of the spectrum because it's sawtooth waves um, stacked on top of each other. Uh, they have a lot of harmonics. So you have a kick, uh, a sub bass and this chord going and it's already sounding like uh, like a full track almost. And then it's just a question of arranging stuff around it, um, which is what I did. So I'm going to leave it at this. Thank you so much for watching. If you were crazy enough to watch until the end, I commend you. Um, like and subscribe. Uh, if you've come this far, you'll probably want to do that. You can still get my free sample pack, Too Many DFAM Kicks, if you... Um, sign up for my newsletter you can also do that and uh, uh, cancel your subscription immediately if you don't want to receive any emails i haven't actually been sending emails but i might in the future you can just get the samples for free if, if you don't want the emails that's absolutely fine um, again thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you on the next one bye bye <laughs>